You've got a movie made about you, mm. you've written books, you inspire people from stage, you've been a professional athlete, and you fly planes. Upside down. Shall we begin? In this episode, we go behind the scenes speaking with a very inspiring woman, a former athlete, a speaker, an author, and our very favorite, a pilot. She allowed our cameras to get up close and personal to talk about the stories from her journey, the struggles, and the truly remarkable life she now lives. This is Infinite Aviators, sharing aviation experiences, hints and tips, and interviewing great aviator minds. I'm Amir Zergi, and today I have with me Janine Shepard. Janine, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Amir. Pleasure. So, Janine, you have an amazing story. You've got a movie made about you. Mm. You've, you've written books. You inspire people from stage. You've been a professional athlete, and you fly planes. Upside down. In the <laughs> planes, upside down. So, yeah. that's, that's awesome. So, tell me a little bit about your story. Well, I was an elite athlete. I was a cross-country skier uh, training for the Winter Olympics. I was actually training for the 88 Winter Olympics in Calgary. I was on a training bike ride with uh, my teammates from the Australian ski team and um, we were riding from Sydney to the Blue Mountains, a six hour bike ride. We'd been on our bikes for half, about five and a half hours. And my memory is just riding up a hill, looking up, seeing the sun shining in my face and then everything went black. I'd been uh, run over by a speeding utility truck. Right. And uh, really that was a moment that changed my life forever. Mm. And uh, so when that accident took place, mm. I hear you were told that you were not going to walk again. Well, at first, I mean, I had extensive and life-threatening injuries. Um, I broke my neck and back in six places, five ribs, my arm, my collarbone, my body, uh, legs ripped open, lacerations, abdominal um, bruising head injuries, lost five litres of blood. So they didn't know where the blood was coming from? No, I had internal bleeding and that was, um, you know, the, mo the most critical thing in the early days. And they told my parents that I, I wouldn't survive. I mean, I, someone my size would actually hold about five litres of blood, so I lost all of my blood. Yeah. And for me, really the first 10 days were critical. I actually had what I call, well, I did, I had a near-death experience. And my uh, memory and recollection of that is really just drifting between two dimensions. And, and there was a part of me that just knew that my body was broken yeah. and I didn't want to come back. So um, it was quite a shock when 10 days later I opened my eyes and found myself in intensive care and, and confused, you know, why am I here? Do you feel like you, you made an actual choice to come back? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I did. I made yeah. a choice to come back. But it's like there was a part of you that knew Mm. what you had to come back to, right? Exactly, and that's why, you know, the overwhelming emotions of, of course, sadness and anger and disbelief and confusion and, you know, and I've had to work through a lot of those things, a lot of emotions and anger at coming back, you know, coming back to a body that was broken and disabled because I'm actually a, a partial paraplegic. So yeah. um, having been an athlete and having defined myself by my, by my body, it was, yeah. it was devastating to come back to a body that was broken. Yeah. But yes, I definitely made the choice. And today, although you're sitting in the plane, the viewers may not know, you actually do walk. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I walk. Unassisted. Yeah, I do. You I walk, walk with a limp. Most people, it's been such a long time now. Um, yeah. most, a lot of people actually come up to me and say, oh, what happened? Have you hurt your leg or have <laughs> yeah. you sprained your ankle? Yeah. So, you know, it's it's when people see me walking at a distance, you know, yeah. my limp is, is quite obvious, but I've worked hard to, to come from a wheelchair to where I am now. And, um, but it's been, it's been a long and a very, you know, difficult journey at times. So what drew you to flying planes? Well, when I left hospital in the, in the early days, I was um, in a wheelchair. I, you know, they told me the news that, you know, I'd never be able to do anything again. I was, you know, my life as an athlete was over. I was in my last year at university doing a degree in physical education. So it was devastating. I got sent home in a, a wheelchair and a plaster body cast, they um, I had no feeling from the waist down, you know, and a lot of internal injuries. And I suffered depression. I was obviously devastated at the loss of my life, the life that I knew. And really I was um, sitting outside in my wheelchair and an aeroplane flew overhead and I just remember looking up and, and it was just like the seed was planted. I just thought, you know, there was a part of me inside that just said to me, well, if you can't walk, then you're going to fly. Yeah. 
Wow. And it was crazy. You know, everyone thought I was crazy. And, you know, that was it. It was this incredible metaphor for freedom, you know, from a spinal ward to, you know, to flight. You wow. know, it's the ultimate. I've heard a great Rumi quote and it says, um, we have something along the lines, we have wings, why crawl through life? Exactly, you know? exactly. And so. That's, that's, that's so true. And I mean, I don't know why it was flying, why it happened to be flying. I think it's because for someone who had been paralyzed in a spinal ward, it was, um, you know, it was the greatest, you know, from symbolic um, gesture for me to, to really take to the sky and, yeah. and break the sort of the bounds of gravity. And, and yeah. it was, it was exhilarating. I remember the first time I went up, the sense of freedom was just incredible. Yeah, and you mm. just came back for a flight right now. I and, did, uh, yeah. Back into the planes. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, I've um, for the last, um, well, 20 years really, um, I've just been flying, you know, for fun. I had stopped instructing because I had children. I've been writing my books. I've been traveling the world on the speaking circuit. Yeah. Now my children are at university and um, I'm free again. So yeah. I'm just at the point where I'm, you know, getting, getting my uh, currency back and, yeah. and just loving it. So you're an inspiring mum, you're in, an inspiration to the audiences that actually hear you speak on stages around the world, you've written a book, they've made a movie about you, I mean what's next? <laughs> what's next? Um, well I, you know I, I do have goals yeah. and, 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 th and that's fun, I mean I say to people we need goals because that's part of the creative process of life and you know it's, it, life is a creative process and that you know having goals and, and, um, and, and sort of achieving them or heading towards them you know gives us focus yeah. and it's also fun and creative yeah. but I also don't get attached to them and that's one of the great lessons that I've learned in life is that you know you have goals but you hold them loosely because I know better than anyone that you know that life is about change and no one can guarantee that you going to achieve those goals yeah. so you've got to be flexible mm -hmm. and you've got to have you know this sort of sense of fun about about life and about um, where it takes you because sometimes where you end up isn't where you thought you, you know you yeah. were headed but it doesn't mean that it's not going to be great I always say it's not about the outcome it's about who we became on that process yeah it is a process you know we may have a goal that we that we have in mind but it's not about the achievement of that mm. it's it's about who we came or who we be, have become mm. in achieving or not achieving that it's like who do we become and uh, yeah. and uh, you are definitely an inspiration I mean I know just we had an open day here at Red Baron uh, just on Saturday and just seeing people coming up to you going oh you're Janine Shepard and, and, and seeing their faces <laughs> yeah. light up knowing who you are and what you know how much you've touched them so uh, for our viewers, how do they find you? What's tell me? Tell me the name of your book. Tell me the name of the movie. So okay. Yeah. Well, I've actually written five books. I'm wow. I'm writing my sixth book at the moment. Okay. So uh, three of my books are autobiographical. So a lot of people would know my books through my first book, Never Tell Me Never, which was made into a movie, and uh, Claudia Carvin plays me in the movie. Yeah. So we flew these in the movie, all the robins, which yeah. was great fun. Um, then I have um, Dare to Fly and On My Own Two Feet. So they're autobiographical. I have a couple of little smaller books. Um, Reaching for Stars and my the last uh, one I wrote was a book called The Gift of Acceptance yeah. and that's a gift I've book. Seen that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really a book about uh, the process of acceptance and what that means to me because you know acceptance isn't um, resignation to me acceptance is actually all you know it's, it's empowering acceptance is saying okay this has happened now what It's about transcending what's happened isn't yeah, it Yeah it's about it's about um, it's about using those things and and um, you know creating um, a new life. I mean, I say life is the, you know, rebuilding a life is the ultimate creative process. And I always say to people that um, things don't happen to you, they happen for you. Ah, oh, beautiful. So, uh, you know, that's really what I, I mean, uh, what I love doing, of course, you know, my accident has, has changed direction for me. Yeah. Sure, I'm, you know, I didn't get the chance to go to the Olympics or even win a medal, but I found <clears throat> much, um, more fulfillment in being able to to be of service to other people and and yeah. and it's helped me to be a better person a much more compassionate person and i love um, what you just said yeah <laughs> just, i just stopped right there life doesn't happen to things you things don't happen to you they happen for you for you what an mm. inspiring thing to hear yeah brilliant and it's well been said. yeah it's been so it's been um you know incredible um 
journey for me and I'm still you know I'm still learning and I'm still growing and and at the moment I'm you know I've, I'm, I've moved to America because I'm not exactly sure why I'm there I mean I'm very much I follow my intuition and and I'm very good at listening to that yeah and you know when something comes up and says you've got to go I'm you know I, I listen to that and so my intuition took me to America and that's why I am at the moment and who knows where you know what will unfold from that but I'm just loving the journey uh, we could have such a longer interview. We could. <laughs> it's really brilliant. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, if you want to learn more about Janine Shepherd, please, do you have a website? I do, um, which is JaneneShepherd.com. JaneneShepherd.com, so that's just below, you can see that. Uh, check out Janine, please check out the movie. I mean, I'm not a book reader, I'm pretty lazy, so mm. uh, check out the movie. Uh, yeah, if they, you know, the book is available as an e-book now. I know they can go to Amazon and I think they can download it as an e-book as well. Well, thanks, Janine, I really appreciate oh, you thanks, being Samir. on the show. I, did, I mean, handshake doesn't work. It's just, oh, it's, yeah, hug. I've got to give you a hug. Guys, join me next episode as I get to explore and fly one of my favorite aircrafts, the Pitt Special. Until then, keep looking to the sky.